I've sold 3.33 shares, so I want to close up the position at the end of the year by buying 3.33 shares of stock A. Now, there are two possibilities. You can have a good state of the world and you can have a bad state of the world, right? Now, you can do this for either state. I want to do this for the bad state. Cash flows of synthetic portfolio at year end. Let's assume that the bad state occurs. Now, if you assume the good state, it's not going to change the result at all. You can confirm that later. So let's suppose that state two of the world occurs, the bad state. And then we want to reverse the transaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy back 3.33 3 shares of stock A. And what's the price of stock A if the bad state of the world occurs? Cash inflow or outflow? Outflow. It's an outflow of? <laughs> I bought 11.11 11 11 share, 11 shares of stock B. Let me sell it. What's the price at which I'll sell it? Inflow or outflow? Inflow, right? Inflow of? Have I replicated the risk free asset? Absolutely. I've replicated it exactly. How much did I pay to establish this portfolio today? I paid $83.33. What did I end up getting one year in the future? 100. Now, you can confirm that you will end up with exactly the same result if the good state of the world occurs. If the good state of the world occurs, you will again end up with the same 100. In other words, what this is telling you is that by using this long position and short position or by buying 3.33 shares of stock A and selling 11.11 .11 shares of stock B, you have essentially cloned, in a, a cloned a risk-free bond uh, using using uh, using the short and long positions down here. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. I do have maybe my question is kind of naive, but how do you find out what the the, in, the good or, or bad year in your price are? Uh, that that's assumed. That's given to you in, in the problem, actually. In fact, in a more complicated version of this, you can assume some sort of a distribution. You can typically assume that the distribution is like a log normal distribution. So what we are really doing down here is creating a sort of a cartoon version of the real world, where we are constraining the stock prices to be equal to just two values, a state one value and a state two value. For instance, you can just say that there is some distribution with regard to the stock prices. That's in fact the leap that a more complicated pricing model like the Black-Scholes makes. The Black-Scholes simply says that rather than just assuming a binomial world, let's assume a world in which you know you have an unknown distribution for the stock price. Yeah, in light of this, can you just run through one more time uh, the long and the short? Wait. Okay. Just the. All right. Uh, the long and the short is you have the negative sign, right? Now, negative sign always imply that it's a short position. Now, when it's a short position, just think of short as meaning selling, okay? So in order to create this portfolio, what do you have to do? You have to short, which means sell. You're selling 3.33 shares of stock A. And then the transaction at the end of the year needs to be reversed. Now, would it help perhaps if I do the, the good state out, out here once again? Or maybe you guys can, uh, can do it together. Let's try and do this for the good state. I just want you to confirm that this will, uh, that these values will hold in respect to of whether it's a good state or a bad state. Let's do this for a good state. Same thing down here. This does not change because uh, the negative 3.33 and the positive 11.7 are asking you to establish this portfolio. At the end of the year, what's going to change down here if the good state occurs? With the prices, right? What will be the price here? Yeah, this is going to be 30. What about this price here? 18. It means that this value down here, remember you want to have exactly the same future value. This value here is going to be equal to 3.33 times 30 is going to be negative 100. Uh, when I sell 11.11 .11 shares uh, at 18, I, that's it, exactly the same result, exactly the same result, yeah. If the interest rate is 10% and uh, we have to pay the risk free bond uh, 9 pounds, for example, 9 pounds. The risk free interest rate is 20%. We established
established that right in the beginning, actually. Okay. Just change the status of that person. Okay. Ah, uh, no. Then you see everything changes. It's like you're pulling on a cord to which everything is attached. Every single thing is going to change. If the risk free interest rate not 10 percent, uh, not 20 percent, but 10 percent, the price at which you are buying the stock today is going to be different. Which means that your long and short positions here are going to be different which means that your cash flows are going to be different, too. So everything will change, depending upon the risk free rate down here. Can we also use these, uh, these two securities? Yes, absolutely. If you can use the security, the procedure is exactly the same, irrespective of what the risk free interest rate is. You can go ahead and try this for a risk free interest rate of 10% or 5%, whatever. All that will happen is that the number of shares of stock A and the number of shares of stock B are going to change. But you'll end up with exactly the same result. You'll end up with the same destination, wherever you start from. Sure. Uh, one So long as you just realize that 
uh, we are going to be selling 3.33 shares and then you're going to be reversing that at the end of the year. This is simply a more explicit demonstration of the transactions that are required in order to create this. All right, uh, let's move on to the second example, which is slightly more complicated than this one. But I'll tell you what, let's come back to the second example a little later. Let's do the one on triangular arbitrage, because you have an assignment question of that, and I'll come back to the next example. quotes down here, three triangular quotes if you will. The question is, is there a way that you can make, and this is important, risk-free profits from, uh, from exploiting any possible discrepancies in these quotes down here? The first thing to do down here is to check for something called a cross-exchange rate. Okay? Now you can do this in any different number of ways down here. It seems to be most natural to use this quote and this quote, because they essentially seem to have the same denominator. So for instance, if I were to figure out this cross exchange rate, and as far as this cross exchange rate is concerned, I'm going to take US dollars 1.4443 per pound, and then I divide that by 1.6200 per pound. Now the reason why this seems to be the most obvious is because this and this essentially will cancel out, leaving you with a cross exchange rate that is in reality equal to very explicitly. 